look but bearable. <laughs> oh, it's deep fried, right? I still haven't eaten, like, um... I want to have tempura udon. But when Mume and I went to conveyor belt sushi, I had, like, a tempura fried shrimp. It was so good. It was so tasty. One more. I also had, um... You know, like, a, they have the eki bento? Which is like the type of bento that you eat while you're on like the Shinkansen or something. Well, I was just like exploring around and I saw like a place selling them while I was like trying to get on a train. And uh, I ate one and it was so good! Oh, it had like fried rice and it had like a little tiny fried, um, what is it called? Katsu... Uh, like a pork... Uh, I forgot what it's called. Katsudon? Katsudon? Karage. It did have a piece of karage too. Tonkatsu. Yeah, even though it was like cold, it wasn't like crunchy or fresh. It was still so tasty. The food here is so good. It's so good. I went to eat ramen at a place. And it was like a really small place. And I was like one of the only people in there. I think it was the owner. <laughs> The owner was there, and he was like standing there with his arms crossed watching me And I was like really full already But I was trying to eat as much as I could But uh, afterwards, Kiara told me, she's like, yeah, you're supposed to, you know, slurp really loudly And I was like trying to be quiet because, you know, I just didn't want to be like rude I don't know, because, you know, if they see like a girl, they're like, oh, why are they being so messy? You know, that sort of thing, but Afterwards, Kiara told me that, yeah, they like want to hear you slurp really loud. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was trying to be polite, but he was like staring me down as I was eating. <laughs> but it was good. It was kind of weird. It had like some, it was like ground beef or something. I don't know what it was, but I ate it. Sorry, I'm going for another bite of my fruit sando. The food here is the best. If you guys haven't been to Japan, I hope you can go at some point because the food is so good. I feel like if I never went to another country, I'd probably just be satisfied Because <laughs> this is the first time I've ever gone anywhere It was scary because I thought maybe they would ask like while I was in the airport I thought that customs would maybe like question whether or not like why do you have a laptop? Why do you have a microphone? And what, what are you really doing here in Japan, you know? <laughs> but thankfully nobody asked any questions like, Oh my god, I've, I've had so much so much different types of cakes since I got here. <laughs> I had an orange cake, I had tiramisu, I had um, a strawberry... No, I don't think I've had strawberry cake yet, but I had a pistachio cheesecake. Yeah, and I tried like pretty much all the kombini food. And that's... <laughs> that was like the only thing I ate for the first two days. They have like cream puffs, they have a uh, really tasty onigiri, and these different sandwiches. Oh, like I have egg sando right now in my bag. They're so good! Right? You have to eat the kombini food. Because the 7-Eleven in the US, they just sell the stinky hot dogs. But here they have like a piece of crispy chicken. It's so tasty. And they also have, um, what was it? Oh, yeah, I had curry, the curry pan, curry bread. Oh, so good. All the food here is so good. And it, a lot of it is like pretty cheap too. It's kind of crazy how much good food there is for not even that much. I miss Japanese food. I can see why. Oh my god. Everything is so tasty. I, every time I go to bed, I'm just like so full. <laughs> it's a good thing I've been walking a lot. So I decided that even if it was going to make me sick, I would still eat bread and stuff anyways. All right, let me take this last bite. I'm honestly... Well... I got kind of lucky with my timing because... I have a friend group that's also visiting Japan. And then whole live people as well. So I just kind of tag along, but then I'll also just like go by myself. And I'll get lost in some random street. But I just keep walking because everything is so... It's so interesting to look at, you know? Even if it's not like the usual tourist stuff. I'll just go into like some of the back streets. And like the alleys and stuff like that. And it's so nice. It's fun to get lost. And you know, like compared to the US, everything's so clean and the buildings are so cute. <laughs> I see some like vending machines that they look like I could pick them up. You know what I mean? I've done so much gotcha. 
that's great. <laughs> gotcha everywhere! Every time I see, like, a few, I'm just like, okay, hold on. Let me pull out my coin purse. Got anything good? Mmm. I did get some good stuff. But I don't remember right now off the top of my head. <laughs> so maybe it wasn't that good. <laughs> okay. How long was I there for? Uh, in Japan? I think I was there for, like, two weeks. Yeah. How are the bathrooms there? Oh, the bathrooms are so nice. The bathrooms are all so nice. When I got back... Wait, wait, wait. I have a question for the JP bros. How can I ask this? Um... Sumimasen! Uh... Nihon no hito... Toire... Wa... Kirei desu ka? I wanna ask if they use the bidet all the time. How do I say it? Bidet o... But do they, um, use the spray function on it all the time? <laughs> Bidet o itsumo tsukaimasu ka? Itsumo? Sugoi! Bidet wa sugoi. Toilet wa sugoi. Uh, tsukaimasu. Tsukaimasu. Does that mean sometimes? Or... Uh, depends? Okay, so when you get to the airport in Japan... I had to go to the bathroom because I didn't go to the bathroom during the whole flight. So then, um, when I when I got to the airport, I went to the the restroom, you know, just to see. I didn't have to use it or anything, obviously. Um, and so yeah, they they had the spray function. I was like, well, I wonder what this feels like. <laughs> so yeah, um, I tried it, and they even had a dryer function. But I realized that not all the bidets have a dryer function. I feel like it's too much, you know? It's just too much. Right? As an experiment. <laughs> so... We yeah, have the... It's really nice. The toilet seats are... Like, always warm. Every bathroom I went to... It was always warm. I wonder if it's only like that because it's winter though. Like, in the summer, I guess maybe they turn that function off. But... If I went to like the public restroom or like... A hotel one or... Station one. Restaurant one. You know, just this test. I didn't have to use it or anything. I just would like touch it, you know. Yeah, the 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 toilet seats are warm. Oh my god! When we were in Enoshima, you know, I wanted to see the bathroom, not to use it, obviously, you know, just to see it. And they had the bathroom where it's like you have to crouch. But I wonder how do old people use that type of crouching bathroom where it's like the toilets in the ground? It seems difficult. And I was like, I was wearing a dress and tights, and I was like, I'm not... This is too much. The squat toilet, yeah. So I was like, no, I'm good. I'm good. Oh, culture shock. Oh, yeah, so... I had raw egg twice, and every time it was because... <laughs> one of the JP members wanted me to eat it. <laughs> so, you know, I don't want to be rude. I think no matter what it is, if they would have told me to eat it, I probably would have tried it. And I'm just like, yeah, okay. I'll try it once. I'll try it once. It wasn't so bad. But I did try to cook the raw meat. And I had to like hide from the, the waiter. Because they said that you're supposed to eat it, you know, raw. And I wanted to cook it. And so they were laughing at me because I was holding like a little piece of the raw meat. Trying to cook it on the grill. And I dropped it. It almost fell like, you know, underneath the grate of the grill. It was good. It was good. I think it was better. A little better cooked. <laughs> the taste was like really... Really beefy. You know, like, when you eat steak and it has that, like, really nice steak flavor? It was like that, but without, like, the cooked flavor, if that makes sense. I didn't try natto. I didn't try it, but I'll try it next time. Yeah, well, when I ate, uh, when I had lunch with Kiara and Hachama, when we went to the island, Enoshima Island, <laughs> Hachama was laughing at me because I had some extra rice and I didn't want to leave any because I thought it... You know, it's like, isn't it disrespectful if you leave a lot of food or something? So I mixed soy sauce and miso soup into the rice. <laughs> and then I put some like, um, veggies that I had into the rice. And I ate it like that. And I asked them if it was weird and they're like, Yeah, it's weird. It's weird, but it's nice. They, you know, Kiara said it's nice to see a, a foreigner's take on food, right? Right? It was, it was tasty though. It's good. They said it was like this, uh, dish where you pour tea into the rice and you have it like that. 
So yeah, it's 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 uh it's not that weird, I think. I learned that well there's so many everybody's hair, like a lot of there's so many cute girls in Japan. I'd just be like walking around getting off the train station and oh there's so many girls and they they dress like so cute, so cute, and all of their hair is so nice. And uh I found out that Apparently, they get like a perm to make their hair like really straight and nice. I always thought perm was like the one that makes your hair curly, but I think there's like a perm that makes it really straight all the time, maybe? Oh yeah, I went into like some electronics stores in Japan and they have like a section where they have a bunch of stuff for like skin and hair, but it's like electronic devices and they're like things that massage your face, massage your skin, and like get stuff out of your skin and and then they have like so many so many hair electronic options too like you know these weird looking dryers that i've never seen before and yeah that's really cool it, it seems like there's such a big focus on or you you make yourself pretty salon everybody's so pretty oh yeah one of the stores in japan which is pretty popular and everybody's like oh my god it's the best store ever it's called Don Quixote. I think that's how you pronounce it. Don, not donkey. I thought it sounded like donkey, but it has a penguin mascot, so it's not donkey. They sell eye contact lenses, but you know, like the the ones that only do color. They sell them there, which is weird because that store they sell like everything. They sell bags. They sell gaming headsets. They sell cosplay items. They sell snacks. They sell like hygiene products or like some medical stuff. Yeah, everything. They have everything. Including contact lenses, which is crazy. Walmart of Japan. Yeah, but most of the store, the way that they are, it's not like a big store. I mean, it is a big store, but it's weird because the store breaks down into like a few different floors of like a really skinny building. Because all the, a lot of the buildings in Japan. Uh, they seem like super skinny. Yeah, it's kind of crazy that they have so many floors for like one store and you have to keep going up an escalator. <laughs> they did have Hololive stuff there actually though. Because uh, after the collab with Bay, we went to uh, a Don Quixote because I had to get an extra bag to put all my souvenirs <laughs> so I could check it in for my flight. And we saw that they had Hololive stuff. And Bay was like, whoa, 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 whoa. I kinda want it. I kinda want it. They have some whole life stuff there. If you guys go, you can find it. They have a whole anime section where they have a bunch of stuff. How much whole life stuff did I see in Japan? Uh, a random kombini in a train station. Acrylic stands. I bought one actually. I'll show it to you guys when I do the hand cam stream that I want to do this week. And you have to wait. You have to guess which member you guys think it is. I did see though, Ekora Senpai and Lemmy Senpai. I saw their alcohol. Sake. Actually, at Don Quixote, Quixote, am I saying it right? They also had the Nendo. The Nendroid. Uh, Korone san, Okayu san. Uh, can we get in it? Thank you. How was the public transportation experience? Yeah, taking the public transportation in Japan is pretty nice. It can be kind of hard to find a seat if. You know, you're you're in like the really popular areas on like the subway or metro. I don't confuse because in Japan they call like metro is referred to like a different line and train is referred when you say train it means something else. And when you say metro, it doesn't mean like all of the trains in Japan. And then there's like JR because they have different companies. Uh, the the structure for all of like the subways and trains that they have in Japan is insane. Like, when did they start building all of that? Because it must have been, like, 50 years in development. Because they have, they have so many buildings and so many tall buildings. And they have so much stuff underground. Like, they have all the... They have multiple stations, like, stacked on top of... Or multiple platforms, like, stacked on top of each other underground. It's insane. Planned for a hundred years? No way. No way. It must have taken, like, so long to just plan it out and build it i don't know it's crazy it's super impressive and they have so many tunnels like they have like different exits and tunnels connected to shops and 
I don't know. It's insane. How long did it take you to figure out how to scan the train ticket? <laughs> oh, I got the... I didn't get any train tickets at all. I got the Suica. Suica. Which is like a little card. They have a bunch of different cards that you can use for like... The metro slash train. Yeah, it's like a multi-pass. But you can also use it in stores. Like, you can pay for your food at a kombini. Or you could buy like souvenirs with your Suica. You just have to charge it up. And you could also just take like any train with it. And also, I would buy... Like, especially when I went to Osaka, I bought my Shinkansen ticket. And I loaded it onto my Suica. Yeah, it's kind of daunting because all the stations are really big and it's new and confusing and a lot of everything is like in Japanese, but... It was actually really fun um, trying to navigate like through the streets in Japan and trying to navigate through like the station and the trains. I felt like an explorer, you know? I had my phone out, I was like... Navigating via the map because I, I was I didn't want to do like Google directions So I would just look at the map and walk around and the different streets and stuff It felt like an adventure Investigator. Yeah, investigating Japan it's Like a game, right? A concrete jungle for real Okay, continuing to Yeah, they have so many cafes like themed cafes in Japan. It's so cool Like they have a Kirby one they have the Pokemon one. They have like a Monster Hunter one. Moomin Cafe. Hello Kitty Cafe. So many types of made cafes, obviously. Hasn't I'm pretty sure there has been a Hololive Cafe, but for like specific members. And then last year, was it at Hollow Fest? They had like Hololive theme food and stuff. I've never been to a made cafe before. But maybe I'll go when I go back. Yeah, maybe I will. Now, I didn't visit any cat cafes. I wanted to kind of visit the pig cafe, and then there's like a cafe where you can pet capybaras. But when I would like go check the reviews and stuff, all the, all the pictures that I saw people post of them, it just looks like really small. It makes me kind of sad. It's like, you know, what do they do with the pigs when they get too big, you know? I'm just like thinking all this extra stuff. I'm just like, uh, I don't know. Because apparently sometime, like, if the cats aren't cute anymore, they just, like, get rid of them. Yeah... I guess you gotta pick carefully. You gotta pick carefully. If, if you care about that sort of thing... You know. But yeah, it looks super cute. Did I go to karaoke? No. But I think I'll go next time. Next time I'm in Japan, I think I'll go. Uh, they have owl cafes. They have, like, places where you can pet otters. Places where you could pet snakes. You know, I didn't see any parrots. I wonder if they have a parrot cafe. I didn't go to a onsen, so there's still so much stuff to do in Japan. I'm excited. Yeah, a lot of different types of cafes. A VTuber cafe? That'd be kind of cool. I could totally imagine that, like, instead of seeing, like, a real person behind the counter, they have, like, a screen and it's, like, a VTuber taking your order. Eh, why haven't they done that yet? I could totally see that being a thing. You just get hired. I would work at a cafe, that'd be pretty cool. At least I like the front register, because I don't know how else we would do it. Million dollar idea right there, are you guys listening? Did I eat yakitori? I did it, I tried it. I tried it as at a izakaya. It was alright, I want to try like... Oh, I, I had kushiage, which uh, is fried stuff on a stick. And they had like a fried cheese stick on a stick, and they had like a fried lotus root on a stick, and they had fried asparagus on a stick, a fried crab claw on a stick. It was pretty good. Yeah, I had the crab the crab claw one. It's like uh there's meat inside of it, but I actually couldn't even taste the crab, it just tasted like fried stuff. Which one was my favorite? I like the asparagus one. What I drink in the Isekaya. Yeah. At the at some places where you eat, you have to order like a drink. So I had to order soda. I couldn't I couldn't get just water. I think I got I don't remember. I think I got a Coke. It was just cola. Yeah, I tried takoyaki in Osaka. There was like a really long line for this takoyaki place where they put like a huge piece of of taco inside, and it's like the tentacles sticking out through the top and stuff. But then there was a little takoyaki place right next to it, and there was nobody there! So I went to that place, because... I don't 
don't know. It's just, you know, it's probably it was probably just as good. <laughs> it was tasty though. I didn't have to wait in line too. It was good. I burned my tongue and it was still I still felt the burn afterwards for like four days. It was way too hot. How do you eat it? I was like <sighs> Takoyaki. Yeah, it stayed with me for four days. <laughs> yeah, the sauce is pretty good. I kind of I don't know, bonito flakes are kind of weird to me, like the texture. But they're really fun to watch them move around and stuff. How do you think about... Oh, how does it feel to live in Japan? Uh, it's alright. Yeah, it's pretty good. All the food is just like too good and I'm like... Man, I want, I want my home cooked food, but... I don't have any like cooking utensils and I'm not gonna buy any because I'm not gonna take it back with me. So, you know, I'm just eating dinner outside, ordering food, and I order food and it all builds up and I have all this plastic and trash and cardboard and you have to dispose of food like separately and it's confusing. The food, all the food is too good. It's too good. Yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's pretty nice. Everybody's so busy. Everybody's walking around, you know, like the busiest person in the world. Everybody's a CEO walking around and I'm, I'm like staying inside. I stay inside for like two days. I feel like the world just passes me by. The time here feels different. You know, when I'm at home, I just lay in bed, you know, sit on my couch, you know, look at my fish tanks, and the time just passes by so easily. But here, I'm just like, oh, everybody's, you know, out and doing stuff, and I'm just in here. I'm just watching my anime, you know, playing some games. Time is so precious here for everybody. <laughs> here we go. It's the Amigram! Uh, this was a ramen place that I ate at. I think it was called Mutekia. Mutekia? Yeah, it was pretty good. It was very... I don't know if you could see, but there's like a lot of meat, right? And it's, uh... It's pretty chunky. The broth is like kind of chunky. Well, it wasn't too bad. This, this, uh, piece of pork was like straight up like a piece of ham. Like a... It was a chunky piece of ham. With a lot of fat. Oh, but these are really good. I think this was like spinach or something. It was yummy. Yeah, this was an egg. And this seaweed had like text on it. It, it was, had printed. I'd never seen it before. It had printed text on it. This was so much. I could barely finish. I could barely finish. Was it chashu? I don't know. It was like it was like pink like ham. It tasted like ham. Yeah, it was pretty good. Although I have to say, I because I tried like a few different ramen places, but uh each it on was still, like, really, really good. Now, there's probably some other places that are good too, though. Did I slurp it? Oh, yeah, but this place doesn't matter. It didn't matter because it was really noisy in here. And there were a lot of people. So, the other place that I had ramen... The first place I had ramen at that I told you guys already about, where I think it was the owner watching. Yeah, I was, like, one of the only people in there. There was, like, one other person in there. And, yeah, they could hear me! They were watching me! <laughs> But here, nobody was watching. Nobody was watching. Alright, moving on. And this was ice cream that I tried, and it was grape-flavored. I never had grape-flavored ice cream before. It was pretty good, but it was like standard... You know how if you if you drink grape juice or like grape soda? And then this was some street food that I had in Kyoto. It was Mitsurashi Dango, and it was hot. Oh, it was so good, and it only cost like, I think, 250 yen. For this one thing, which is like a dollar and seventy cents or something, and I'm so jealous. Like in Japan, they have so much good street food, right? I, I feel like, at least in the U.S., there's no it's no street food. It's there's like food trucks maybe, but then you have to wait in a really long line, and it costs like fifteen dollars. But here, you just like walk up to a little stand. You, you, you spend like less than two dollars and you get something fresh and tasty and it's just like, man, this is so nice. It's so nice, all the street food. I had like, what are those called? Oh, potato croquettes, those thingies. And um, I tried dango. There's more stuff that I tried, but I can't remember right now. Oh, ta taiyaki, takoyaki. There's just like so much. Oh, gyoza. Yeah, there's like so much really fast, tasty food. It's nice. This is the Arashiyama. Arashiyama. Alright, I'm gonna try this natto roll. If I can figure out how this... I don't know how... I've never eaten these rolls before that has like the seaweed. 
plastic thingy, so I don't know how this works. It smells funky, but does it taste funky? Do I really want to eat this? Let me open my chicken nuggets, just in case. Not that bad, really. Oh, I don't like it. No, thank you. What does it taste like? Have you guys ever... Okay, let's say you... One day you had something to drink. Maybe you ordered like a iced coffee or like a milkshake or something. And you're drinking it while you're playing games. And then you put it off to the side. And you know, there's still like residue inside. And then you kind of forget about it. And then you clean it up like a month later. And it smells... Bad. It kind of tastes like how the inside of like a old cup smells. The chicken nuggets are yummy though. Yana, I don't want to eat it. Come inside. Well, they're fermented, so you know, it's fermented. I'll just put this off to the side for now. Maybe it's something I'd get used to. Do I like kimchi? Uh. It's kind of weird, like the texture, it's like bubbly. But I'm not really that big on spicy stuff. Oh, the chicken nuggets are so good though. Mm. Is Sakura starting to bloom? That's what I heard. I haven't seen any though. I still have time though. I still have time. Still have time to go see some Sakura. How expensive are the oranges? Oh no, I got like a pack from the Kombini where it's like pre-peeled, pre-cut. Sucked all the soul out of the orange. Uh, how expensive is it? it? Looks like about 270 yen. Do you ever feel homesick? Yeah, a little bit. Especially miss being around, you know, Bubba and Mickey and Pet. It is kind of cool being in Japan for an extended period of time. It is cool to be here though. Uh, there was a comment I read on like one of the clips that people translate uh, with Japanese subtitles. It was about me talking about Tokyo being super busy. And one of the comments was like, uh, it is really busy, but it's, oh, it's, it's really chaotic, but it's fun to be able to jump into that chaos like at any moment or something. And that's true. Cause uh, you could just jump in and, you know, join the crowd whenever. Japan, like, I guess the metropolitan area is really interesting to me because it's so it's so big and like it's always bustling anytime you go to like one of the bigger stations there's just like this huge amount of shops that are always packed and people buy like so many souvenirs like, like edible souvenirs and there's so many there's just so much stuff to buy all the marketplaces are really cool <laughs> and all the food because, like, sometimes at a station, they have, like, these, um, kind of, yeah, these marketplaces, or at a department store, at, like, the bottom floor, they have these big marketplaces that sell, like, fancy chocolates, and, like, a bunch of box of, like, cookies, or sweets, or, like, different cakes, and, yeah, it's really, know, there's so much stuff to buy! So much stuff! Mochi! Uh, what is that called? Wagashi? I don't know if this is the right word. If you could ever bring your pets over, would you live here? Oh, uh, I don't know. I don't think so. I like it here, but I don't know if I'd want to live here. I think it may be, like, going forward. I probably spend, like, one or two months a year here or something. And try to sync it up with, like, other EN members. Um, and also, like, JP members. And, yeah, I kind of feel bad though, because, like, <laughs> taking a plane, eh. I'm a highly adaptable human being. Yes. I realized that when I was in Japan, uh, you know, it's pretty a big change of lifestyle for, like, over a month. And I was like, oh yeah, this is nothing. I try to stream as much as I can, I walk a lot of places, do a lot of stuff, go to dance class, official recordings. What? This is my life. No problem. I brought back a lot of souvenirs. I did. I'm looking around my room trying to see. Oh, I got this really cute Hello Kitty tin. 
I don't even know what was in here. I think it was different types of seaweed. Yeah, I brought back a lot of souvenirs, but uh, I don't think I have them in my detective office right now. I still, I still have a, a lot of my stuff packed up. Except my dirty clothes. I did at least put those to wash. The drying clothes in Japan is really cool because uh, I didn't know, but a lot of pretty much nobody owns dryers in Japan. People put their clothes up to dry either outside or in like the bathroom, not the toilet room, because toilet rooms usually separate. In the room where you bathe, where you have like the shower and the bath, um, it's like it has a door. You know, it's tile, and you can just shower right in that room. It's like a big shower room, and it actually has like buttons and settings on it. So you can put a setting to make the air warm if you're like cold and you want to take a bath, or you can set it to dry setting. And you wash your clothes in the washer, and then you put it to dry in your shower room. It's really convenient. It's cool. Yeah, technology. Is electricity affordable? I don't know. I didn't uh, have to worry about paying that type of bill. So actually, I don't know. I'm sure there's some videos on YouTube about it. It don't work that well. It worked for me. But like, um, I wanted to use like a specific outfit uh, like the next day. So I put my clothes to wash. Like in the middle of the day, and then I put them up to dry as soon as they were done. So they washed for like 30 minutes, and then they were already dry and ready to go, you know, the next day. But yeah, it works pretty well for me. It just, it takes like, I don't know, it probably takes like over 8 hours, to be honest. <laughs> but if you plan out for it, it's not that bad. You just let it dry while you sleep. And because the washer is so small too, and it, you don't really have like a lot of room to hang up stuff. Usually I wash clothes in like big loads because I just... Yeah, I'll just wear like one outfit for as long as I can and I'll just move to like the next outfit and then when I completely run out of clothes, that's when I finally wash all my stuff like at the same time. But yeah, when I was in Japan, I had to learn to uh, only wash one outfit at a time pretty much. <laughs> the bad habit. When I uh, first started getting paid from Hololive, one of the first things I did was order like a bunch of packs of like the same shirt and a bunch of packs of like the same pants and I would have like a streaming outfit you know <laughs> this is like I, I don't go anywhere I don't I usually don't really go anywhere and even if I do go out I just wear you know what's comfortable right but now I've stocked up on shorts because it's gonna start getting warm soon underneath my detective outfit it's so much more like tangible when you're in Japan more it's just it's kind of weird like seeing vtuber stuff just like out in the open just like part of normal everyday life like advertisements and the stations and stuff like that <laughs> pretty crazy yeah going to japan is so cool i hope you guys get the chance one day if you haven't been before have i come across myself on the streets in japan um i think i think so it was mostly mostly a lot of JP members because obviously they, there's like always merch stuff happening and collaborations with other companies and stuff. So I definitely saw some of that. Like in one of the konbinis, they had uh, acrylic stands of Noboko Senpai and Azuki and uh, Subaru Senpai. And they also had, because it was, um, I think it was there around Valentine's Day, yeah. And they also had like uh, chocolates that had the Hololive cards and stuff. And you could also get Hololive Posters right in the kombini. Yeah, there's like the themed cafes and stuff. So cool. Ah, there's so much cool stuff. Dangerous for the wallet. Yeah, it is. But also like some of this stuff was kind of... Kind of cheap. You know, for like uh, I think for acrylic stand it was like 1400 yen. And then for the chocolate, it was like... I don't know, 150 yen or something. It was pretty cheap. Advertisement with Gita. Oh yeah, yeah. I did see that one. <laughs> the IRL ad feels weird. <laughs> uh, I thought I thought it would be something else, but it was for um, blank Holofest. This is for Holofest. Yeah, I thought they were. I thought it was gonna be like some augmented reality thing, like seeing the ads where they ha they had like Gura sitting next to somebody on the subway. <laughs> I thought I thought I was like, oh, it could it be like augmented reality thing or something? Eh, 